remove both of them. Even Demon Kite's Varus is respected here, but NGX responds with a ban on Pan's Champion, which is the Ziggs that dealt so much damage in uh, the games a while ago, especially in game number two. And the Yone, of course, will always be respected by J-Team. This is pretty much an adjustment respect by both squads. The Gragas gonna come through after it being available this time around since NGX has to take away the Camille as well. Yeah, they have to. Because if it's left open, J-Team could prioritize that. And uh, that was just be a really strong top laner being left for Dawn 1 to wait. And now NGX picking up the Alistar. The next pick would be crucial. And Kai'Sa is something that they haven't used thus far. And they could play for late game if they go for Kai'Sa. But what else would they pick up in this game 3? And what champion as well can they use to shred the HP bars of these champions that is being picked up right now by J-Team? Two tanky champions. And also the, Z the Zeri, for sure. That is just going to be locked in here by Barry. We saw his uh, incredible performance a while ago during their match against Skate and Ulcer Y. And it's going to be utilized once more here against Nygma Galaxy. Kha'Zix is going to come through from Joshi means that they are investing a lot in securing objectives though. Yeah, 100%. And now with Kai'Sa locked in by NGX, I forgot to mention that Pan, remember, came from the mid lane. So we could still expect a brand of Vex. These champions can still come through into the bottom lane if JTM wants to go for that route. And so far, coming into the second ban phase, Vi and Renekton removed. Mm -hmm. that, that is something that we haven't really seen that much, right? The Vex, we have seen some time, but the brand is just much more rarer. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, occasion we have seen it once, but not just yet. Maybe this might be the perfect time for JT, right? To, to muster it out, unless they're willing to save it until the grand finals. But if I, Volibear, Rennington as well, gonna be respected on both sides. Maybe one last ban here by J Team towards, um, towards Aaron's side is gonna be key. Maybe a ban on the Lucian which he has been picking up a lot of times, would be key into interrupting that early game that usually NGX invests. Now, I like this more. I like the Corky ban more because if NGX is double downing on towards the late game, Corky scales so much better than uh, a Lucian would. So, banning away the Corky removes that option for NGX. Now, Swain would be hovered though. It's something new that we could see here in finals for season one for WRLA. Classic Aaron. Right, this champion has been toned down a little bit, uh -huh. but the play style, the execution is just perfect. This is for it. NGX. And you mentioned this, <gasps> Infinity. You mentioned this. This is the, it. The Burning Man being hovered right now. Ah, oh. not, not yet, not yet. <sighs> we're a bit, we're a bit too excited on they the brand us. hover. <laughs> they, they heard us, but so far not gonna come through yet here for game number three aatrox and tash will be hovered and locked in for j team oh man they, they caught the gold they spotted it this is the champion that we do see being banned away a lot of times as well just because of the impact on that enchanted castle arrow good last pick having the ribbon for hide in which he had a really astounding performance in game number one a while ago getting really good flanks and getting really good engages as well on j team's side but right now, this is looking to be a very early game centric for J Team as well. Through the cast and through the Enchanted Kissel Arrow. If they can get at least one member of NGX suppressed, that is already a takedown for sure, since they also have the Debash and Justice. Yeah, it's definitely a new look and. Uh... Something surprising though we haven't seen so far because it's all about aggression from game one and game two that NGX has completely uh, double, double downed on completely for over the past two games. But now it's a little bit more of a different story. They have the Kai'Sa in their favor so it could definitely scale much more better. And now I'm really excited. How can NGX perform with this type of lineup coming in to this semi-finals? Remember, this is a best of five series. Race to three wins. Both these teams, two games away to take the final spot here in WRLA Season 1. Two wins, right? Oh, they're just this close. And one team is going to be getting that match point after this game. 
That is how crucial this game is gonna go. And we see the big adjustments that they have made. The Zeri, the Aatrox, the Ash, the Swain, and the Kai'Sa here on NDX as well. Cheers from the crowds, of course, supporting both of these teams. Let's hear it from them. Yeah, and right now in GX, the early rotations coming in from the team on the top side river. No engaging, no engagements does yet will be made for NGX going back to a little bit of what we saw from game number two the two people staying on mid lane while the rest goes for the top lane goes for the turret pressure but I think they're going back into standard just on a little bit JTM again investing a lot on the push for plates is uh, definitely a good sign but NGX having no answer whatsoever on the other side means that it's going to be a tougher route for them just through the plates. We see a 600 gold lead by J Team. 37% damage by Pan a while ago. It's just insane. Precise hits. Precisely. On the crucial target targets of NGX. Well, they got the gold lead due to the fact that they were able to take a couple of in the bottom lane. So too early to tell. They take the snow break. Now Aaron goes for the flash, tries to go for the root, won't miss it out, but Barry miss flashes over the left and just G follows it through with a kill. First blood secured by NGX. Perfect way to jumpstart this game. Gold funneling onto just G as well. That will help him land more damage onto the crucial members of J team later on. And just perfect here to, to start out in a minute or so. A kill has been commenced by NGX and this is the way to go for them, right? Because early game is their way in investing and taking on against J Team. They need to get more enable hide as well later on and Demon Kite to flourish. Yeah, and uh, that could definitely be the options here this time around. And looking at that, J Team on DY. From what we have talked about a while ago, Gragas, this is synonymous to the name of DY at this point. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the, the DY special is always there. And or the classic rather, as he always makes the, the impressive cast and body slam to isolate the members uh, or of the enemy team. That is something that NGX should always be cautious of. But Aaron, Aaron is just hiding, goes for the root, now secures the lock on onto 0711. Will not push through as they have the eyes on Barry. Just she will not pursue for the engage and 0711 backs off. Mm -hmm. Good respect here on JT and the possible re-engage, especially with DY in the mix. It's just too risky to even gamble through. DY, body slamming on the draw, just a small support will battle. And meanwhile, as Aaron looks to defend this mid. Arrow, an arrow coming in, locks onto Swain, but you have Alistar coming into the backside, knocks up onto one. That is a one for one trade, There's 7 11 Forcing to back away, but Barry is now in danger as just she looks for him and Demon Kite Ooh. just goes for the right flank and they get the better end of that trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Swain falls down, but this is already a 2-0 start here for just she. Demon Kite is helping as well. Oh, nice Ooh. flash coming in from Pan to just retreat back to safety. That is to stay alive. It's just... Uh, necessary for Pan in exchange for that flash. Let's like just replay one more time. 0711 was waiting a little bit late, I would say, or delayed in, in getting that burst down. Draw survives, they lost the Swain, but just she just committing onto the kill, onto Barry, just perfect. 0711 managed to stay alive, but again, every time you give this Kha'Zix a kill, it's going to be more and more scary. Oh, nice arrow coming in from Ash, coming in from Pan once again, just delaying that recall from Draw. Because remember, it's a slight interruption. Right, the Drake will come out soon. Mm -hmm. It's in about 15 seconds, I would say. Uh, just a slight delay on the recalls can be important as well. J Team, um, actually, is a little bit late on the recall, I would say since the, the members of NGX already came back from the base and it's starting to establish control in terms of vision on this bot side river. But it looks like J-Team has some interest in taking the RH instead. I don't like this, if ever, because J-Team's way of winning is getting the dragon staff. 
that has to be the pattern as well on all of the games that we have seen yesterday and even a while ago. So they, that they really need to contest the dragon against NGX. Yeah, but NGX has a different lineup this time around. They want to go for the Drake as well. Barry Ooh. uses up the flash. No more summoner spell on that. Now the arrow stuns onto Swain, followed up an explosive cast. Oh. Aatrox goes for the blade and gets the kill. Draw with the tree man and knock up. Not enough though, as he loses his life. And NGX loses two of their members, cannot contest the Drake. Oh man, they do follow it up. Just she trying to collapse onto the RH. Have to go back. Ooh. Just she's really low. Don't want to wait. Super tanky at this state. And DY Pan is coming right up. They have to give it up. Yeah. This is just complete zoning by J-Team right now. Double objective. This is going to be th threatened by J-Team. Perfect way to jumpstart this game. Going in for the flank. On the back. Rift Herald. Who gets it? It's J-Team who takes it down. And now Killer Instinct coming in from Demon Kite. Hoping to get that kill. And they do. Aatrox is gone. And now Garen falls down. And now DY That's and Pan stuck on top lane. Getting pinned down. Going in for the protobelt from Draw. Knocks him up, not gonna be enough. Draw still safe, but the trade is there. Kaisa falls. DY looking to go back into a fight, but this is over. NGX doesn't want any more of that. Mm -hmm. NGX, they did lose two key objectives. And Betty was just busy split pushing into the bottom lane as well. That's why J Team didn't have the numbers advantage in the top side fight. But this is also a lead that they have established right now. A thousand, almost a thousand five hundred gold lead, in which we will see a replay. Of let's check that one more time. As they tried, just see unsuccessful in getting the smite, allowed J Team to get that double objective. But the kills were there, since they did have the numbers advantage. The Zeri was in the bottom lane. They tried to dive onto Pam, but good interruption, I would say, coming in from DY nonetheless. He stayed alive until the very end. The kills were there for NGS that allowed them to at least get back a bit in terms of goal. But it's still not enough because the RH will charge you in the mid lane. Possibly a second one in this inner turret. Quite uncommon, but Rift Herald secured by J Team pushes down on tier 2 turret mid lane. Now NGX is on the back foot on a huge deficit this time around in the early game. 2k gold disadvantage up against J Team. They need to go. Bro, and just G3 man roam from NGX. And Garen's gone. DY follows up though. Hoping to get that trade. Explosive cast. Puts draw on the wall. Stands up. No escape. 0711 follows up. Aaron is oh in my danger. God. The knock up is phenomenal. DY uses up the flash. Allah with a body slam. Gets that knock up and takes the kill. It's one for one. Uh, 0711 is starting to be so unstoppable right now in this game. There's just no burst damage coming from Nigma Galaxy. And that's how they just extended that fight prior to how we usually see J Team operates. This Aatrox is just perfect for them to again threaten not only the late game but also in the mid game right now. Goldie rising, ballooning, towers falling down. On NGX's side, and no answers so far coming in from them. Yeah, each single chess piece is now falling down one by one in NGX's plan. Checkmate is not gonna be something that they could achieve pretty soon. So much more to overcome in this game. And now, with objectives coming out arrow. soon, the arrow will Ooh. miss! Just G, good escape! Jumps over the wall. That arrow will not connect onto anyone, and now they're going in for the counter engage. Hide is really low, Ooh. however, don't want to wait. The Mash Injustice secures the kill. And now, from the they're left flank, Demon Kite hoping to get that kill, but Pan is just too much damage, and Demon Kite will fall down. Just you hoping for that kill. Pan is safe. DY, the spot for the team. Just she will not be able to secure the trade. Aaron will fall, the ace will be secured, and J Team will dominate. A clean ace by J Team, a perfect demonstration of how deadly they are, how manipulative they are in any sort of team fight. And Jax got a little bit too greedy, got a little bit too desperate, and the punish was just delivered onto them. Let's check this replay one more time because it started off a little bit bad since the interruption was there, and also the isolation 
onto Hyde, got him pinned down, and then we see the transition onto Perry's side. If that Void Seeker actually connected, it could have been a kill by Demon Kai, but it didn't happen. Joshi tried to surprise him with a flash in, but the damage wasn't really there. He got caught out, the bot is not perfect for DY, and Aaron was just left out, alone, and unscathed. This team is J-Team reigning supreme. Once again, just she just jumping over the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Not gonna get hit anytime soon. And now Draw goes for the counter engage. Jimon Kite immediately killer instinct on the DY. Has to use Flash to go back into safety. And GX will not push through further. That's enough. Hyde is in danger. 0711 is here as well. But the rest of the crew is here to help. And 0711 doesn't want any of that. We're now sensing a similar pattern of game number two a while ago. Two Dragon Stacks, one more to go for J-Team. And GX has to deny them at least this last Dragon, or else it's game over. We do see the gold funneling towards Just G, right? So the damage is purely coming in from him. But he has to really land those decisive blows so that he can go on the reset, hunting and jumping around the members of J-Team. But so far, it, it hasn't been really possible especially with dy in the mix this guy whenever he gets his gragas he can just make sure that no one comes close to the crucial members of jt yeah and i'm telling you gragas is pretty much dy and dy is gragas i mean synonymous to the name itself it's so much of he is him strength he is him it's it's crazy when gragas is on the hands of dy but at this point, 8k gold lead for J-Team. So much more of a difficult time for NJX. And remember, they still have Aatrox to fight against. And if Aatrox is fed, no one can beat him down. 4-1-4. Four, four. Oh man, Yomus. And already completed with the Black Reaver going for the third item right now. Also has enough cash to get his Stasis Enchant as well. And the Dragon Staffs. Oh man. This is pretty much coming into an immortal Aatrox right now. And NGX has Good nowhere arrow. to go. An X, but too far ahead for Don one to A to catch up. And at the I moment. Mean, how, how do they come back from that? I, I, can, I can't see a scenario wherein J Team doesn't make a mistake. But NGX wins. That's how clean they are playing right now. It has to be a big mistake. Maybe a miss smite, a a miss call, um, a, a too aggressive, a too far forward movement by J Team in which Pan is gonna get killed. But I, uh, other than that, there's no way for NGX to actually win. They're just too far behind. This is eight thousand gold deficit that they are experiencing right now. It's just a showing of a top two team in Icons Global last year. And in, the, in the, the last couple of years in the professional scene, such a dominating team to play up against, only being behind against Nova, now NGX, with 8k gold deficit, actually probably even more this time around. They have to keep themselves in, now in a bottom lane, hide up against Don128. The Mash Injustice is ready, so if ever they go for a full-on fight, it's not going to be Hyde who wins it. Oh man, Bramble Vest, um, Black Lever, even Sterox, already completed by this guy, and it's so hard to take him down. The shields are just supreme, and even if you land the damage, yeah, slowly but surely, maybe hide and take him out. But it's just so hard to do that on a team fight. This guy is so damage. Well, then there. Oh, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow did not connect once again. A good sidestep coming in from NGX. Now, JT. Once you disengage, and they do. They have to wait. They, they, they cannot afford to step forward this time around against J-Team. Any, any pixel, any Tebo distance close to DY can render them useless and isolated once more. And it has happened so many times already in this game. And uh, the NGX is just forced to play around with um, just within the shadows. And just set vision across the areas in which maybe, just maybe, through a glimpse of chance, maybe a miracle steal coming in from Joshi and taking a Baron and taking maybe this dragon as well. But different starting bot side, there's no vision at all from NGX. 
And how do you do? It's Draw going in for the face check. Don want to wait as a target. Half HP already. So much damage coming in from Demon Kite. They have to retreat. Don want to wait is really low. And now with the Meteor Enchant has information. 0711 though is stuck in a bot side. Draw sick. going in for the 1v1. But now going for the world ender. As Don want to wait goes down. And now it is just Chi. He jumps. Jumping away. They're not going to take him down. Demon Kite alone. 1v4. He's gone! And GX has lost the opportunity to turn things around. Mountain Drake is open. The third dragon in the eyes of J-Team. And NGX cannot do anything anymore. They tried desperately. But again, J-Team is just too far ahead. The, the cooldowns are there. The, the sustain. The durability is there from the initial dragon staff that they have acquired. Gold lead as well helped them have enough items to take on Nigma Galaxy despite the positioning of Demon Kite, despite the zoning control of Aaron and Draw, and also Joshi trying to slow them down. Now it keeps on growing. 10,000 right now at 16 minutes into the game, and the third dragon stack secured by J-Team as well. The only thing they need to secure right now is a Baron, and maybe the Elder later on, and they will have the Infinity Stones to take down Nigma Galaxy. One more snap, one clash, will end it all. JTM on the precipice of success to take it home for this game number three. To go to match point is just best of five series. Three games to go into the grand finals where KBG is waiting. Can you do it, JTM? NGX turn things around. Ooh. Don't want to wait in the front lines. Having vision on to draw. Baron still not being started. Goes for the reset. Everyone's just playing tag. Mm -hmm. But that's an unbreakable breakable will casted by draw already. Ha having that on cooldown means that J-Team can just start this Baron anytime soon. And we have a faster cooldown on the Enchanted Gist app, especially with the itemizations here of Pan as well. They're starting the, the Baron. And NGX needs to do this, this time without the ult of draw. NGX knows. NGX knows. Everyone is just around. ECA not gonna connect and they're now going for the retreat one of their best long-range engage is on cooldown and thus far they need it to win landslide up against NGX on the Baron Nasher and while we're at it Hyde has just secured oh, a turret no. in the bottom lane is there 7-11 now is catching up however now with a world ender trying to go for it oh the sidestep coming from Hyde Bought him a bit more time, not enough as Hyde goes down, but Throw follows suit. They want to go for the counter engage. However, however, this is a 4v4 now with Aaron there coming in. Can they do it? As Alistar falls, they have to retreat. No more front line. Aaron uses up the flash to go back, but very over the wall. And they catch up. 0711, the king of the jungle, builds his land on the skulls of his prey. Oh! And they take the kill. Very secures the ace. That is an unofficial quadra kill by Barry and a decisive victory by J Team as well. Getting the ace against Nigma Galaxy in 18 minutes and a half. They secure this game and now posing a match point threat against Nigma Galaxy. J Team once again.